if I do not initiate salam to the person who does not pray five times, who does major sins openly, who does not have a beard, is it recommended or only permissible or not recommended? So basically, Brother Tariq is asking on the ruling of beginning and initiating salam to such an individual. And the rule is that the Prophet told us, alayhi salatu was salam, spreading peace, spreading salam, spreading the greetings of Islam is one of the means of attaining cordial relationship and the love between the Muslims. And this is the only way you would be able to enter Jannah. Now, having said that, the scholars mentioned the issue of Al-Hajr, and that is to boycott a Muslim. So you don't greet him with the greeting of Islam, you don't smile in his face, you don't treat him as you treat other Muslims. And this concept of Al-Hajr was learnt from the story of Ka'b ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, and his two companions. The three of them did not go out with the Prophet ﷺ and his companions on the Battle of Tabuk. And a number of hypocrites, between 50 to 80 of them, also did not go. But these three were close companions of the Prophet ﷺ. So not going with him was dubious. And they apologized when the Prophet came back والسلام, that they had no excuse. So the Prophet والسلام, ordered the Muslims, the whole community, not to communicate with them, to discommunicate with them, and ordered them not to talk or, or socialize. And after 50 days, the Prophet even went further and ordered their wives to separate from them. So this sort or type of boycotting on all social levels is founded in our religion. However, scholars say that this has to be done if there is something tangible that we can benefit of. For example, if there is someone who is sinful, who is doing a lot of bad things publicly, and he's a Muslim, and I decide to boycott him and not to give him salam and not to smile in his face and not to deal with him in any fashion or type of way. But the consequence would be that when he sees this, he gets more and more indulged in haram. And he turns to those who encourage him to do haram. In this case, my boycotting him had backfired. And I should not do that. Because what I aim for is not my self-satisfaction, rather what is beneficial for him and for the religion of Islam. But if I know and I notice that by boycotting him, he is shameful, he is remorseful, he's trying his level best to get back to Islam properly, and he's quitting doing sins, I'm reducing, by the way, I'm treating him his uh, evil, in this case, then this is beneficial. Going back to Tariq's question, he says, if I do not initiate salam, Tariq, why don't you want to initiate salam to this individual? He says, because he doesn't pray five times a day. How do you know that he doesn't pray five times a day? Because he doesn't pray with us in the masjid. Maybe he prays in another masjid. Maybe he doesn't pray in the masjid at all, but he prays home. Okay, if he prays home, then he's a kafir? Of course not, he's not a kafir. He's a Muslim. 
See, what you are doing, Brother Tariq, is going a little bit extreme. Ready to label people, ready to label Muslim as kafir or fasiq or sinful. And this is an idea that you're building up in your mind and it's very dangerous. Allah did not order us to label people. So if he doesn't pray, except in home, he's a Muslim. If he doesn't grow the beard, he's sinful, but he's still Muslim. If he sins openly, he parties and he drinks, he's a sinful person, but he's still a Muslim. This does not mean at all that I should refrain from giving him salam. Depending on the previous rule we've mentioned earlier, why? So many times I meet people and they say to me, we don't like practicing Muslims. And I ask why? They say that they never return our salams. Whenever we pass by them at work or in a mall and we say, Salamu Alaikum, they look at us with disgust. They look down at us and they do not reply to our salams. They're always frowning in our faces. And this is problematic. Dawah wise, you will never win their hearts like this. They say, yes, but in the Salaf, we have narrations that we should not speak to them, we should not uh, smile in their faces, we should shun them. Akhi, again, we come back to the pros and cons, advantages and disadvantages. By your action, are you fulfilling the Sunnah or you're fulfilling your own desires? This is problematic. So, look at the Prophet ﷺ. He was, most of the time, he had a smiley face. He would never frown unless there's a sin. So, you have to follow his footsteps and look. Besides, be, be aware and be careful not to jump into the khawarij saddle and giving takfir to everyone. Oh, this person, he's uh, dating a non-mahram woman. Uh, he's a kafir. This person doesn't wear a, uh, grow a beard and his trousers are below his ankles. He's phew, nothing. This person doesn't pray with us in the masjid. Because by looking down at everyone else, you will eventually end up saying that I am the elite. I am the best among all those around me and there's no one better than me. And this takes you straight to hell. Thinking so this high of yourself and boasting about it is uh, uh, arrogance. And one should not have this. Therefore, when you want to initiate Salam, as long as he is a Muslim, and it is not proven that he's not. Yani for example, if someone says, I am not Muslim anymore. I'm a disbeliever. I'm an atheist. This person, we have to maybe sit with him for a few minutes, half an hour, try to bring some sense into his head. If he's adamant, and if he's insisting that he's not Muslim anymore, in this case, definitely we cannot treat him as a Muslim. He's an apostate. He's a kafir. Okay, then should we kill him? No. This is not your job. This is not done by individuals. This is a legislative issue. This is a crime and the only one qualified and has the power to execute such a decision is the Muslim ruler, the head of the state, who has deputies, who has judges in courts. So this is a crime. This is something that has to be taken in front of a panel of judges, Muslim judges, who would try to talk sense into him. In Islam, it doesn't just tell you kill. And this is not done by individuals. Any individual who kills an atheist or an apostate, just from his own whims and desires, he has to be himself, the murderer, has to be executed. On what basis do you take the law into your own hands? without verification, without knowing whether this man is like you accuse him of being a, a, a kafir or an apostate or not. It is not a, a, a jungle that we live in. 
we have a legislative uh, body, we have judges, we have the uh, Muslim ruler who governs the country. This is their responsibility and they have to look into it and carry out whatever the law says about this.